Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Feature Friday. This week's episode is actually pretty special. We're covering something that has been a pretty hot topic over the last few months, anti-fog eyewear. Reason for it, of course, is kind of the combination between the cold weather and everybody wearing masks with the kind of ongoing pandemic and everything. So we've decided to kind of go over some of the product offerings that are out there in the market, mostly highlighting, of course, the lines that we carry here at Macmore. And we're gonna talk about the different ways that these tend to perform in different kind of circumstances. We've done some in-house testing and we're pretty excited to kind of show you guys the results of that. So first and foremost on this line here, we've got the DSi Volcano. And this one here is a gasketed eye where it is removable, uh, but these ones essentially have the 4A coating. So for the 4A, essentially that's anti-fog, anti-scratch, anti-UV, 99%, and anti-static coating. So it is available on some different types of eyewear. A lot of these are, which is the nice thing. Um, but uh, yeah, so the 4A is essentially a permanently bonded uh, coating to the polycarbonate. So it uses proprietary technology. They all kind of do. Uh, so it provides users with kind of that superior abrasion and anti-fog resistance. Uh, it does have a hydrophobic uh, quality to it. So essentially it kind of repels that water. And that's kind of the primary attribute of the technology used in that kind of 4A coating as far as the anti-fog goes. Uh, next is kind of a special guest appearance, we're going to say. So from DSI's line of the DynaShield, which is kind of their highest rated anti-fog technology. So for that one, we were able to get a pair of the Hummingbird glasses. So these ones have a nice kind of the wraparound style design, very sleek models. The DynaShield technology is essentially a PU based coating. So it is you know, pretty impressive the way that it actually feels. Even when you go to wipe them, they do clean fairly easily, but you do feel that little slight kind of resistance, which I believe comes from that coating. It does perform very well though as a result of that. It also has some self-healing properties, which will protect the lens against some light surface kind of scratches and some hairline scratches. Essentially, the way that they advertise that is that it does recover over a few hours. Generally speaking, they claim that the technology will last up to about six times longer than the competition on average. So that's this one here. Next, we're gonna go into 3M's very famous Scotchgard technology. So for that, we have the Solus glasses here. Um, so for these ones, again, same thing, kind of got a gasketed removable set. Um, so these ones, it's a coating that is bonded to the lens and it retains the effectiveness for what they claim to be up to 25 washes. So that's kind of a different way of talking about it. Um, but essentially for washing, it's hard to exactly know what 3M is implying on that front because there are kind of different definitions out there. Some of them say it is kind of running it through an actual water and kind of soapy washing. Uh, obviously you don't want to use anything too aggressive on that to scratch up the lenses or anything like that, or kind of cause like a, a bit of a smudging or fogging over time. Some people will just say that it's just from doing kind of a classic spray on kind of cleaner. Either way, they do claim about 25 washes. Most of these tend to say that they perform better under that proper care and maintenance though, so don't be necessarily avoiding cleaning your glasses just for that sake. Now, the technology really for the anti-fog portion of it is that it does flatten the water beads into some thin transparent film of water and that allows the clarity to be, to be maintained. So that clarity maintaining is definitely something that we noticed in the Solus when we went to the testing and we're gonna get into that pretty soon. Last but not least, the very famous UVEX Hydra Shield. So this set here did quite well overall, and we're gonna get into that. But the lens essentially has the hydrophilic and hydrophobic technology in action at the same time. So what you're gonna get out of that is that the lens absorbs moisture and then repels it off to the sides. So it essentially reaches a saturation point, which is kind of what kind of creates the water droplets to form. And then it kind of just gets all pushed away. Um, they claim that the coating will last about 60 times better than the technology, which is a really bold claim. But overall, again, you know, with how well these have done in the market, I'm not too surprised to hear that. And then as for anti-scratch properties, they claim it's about two times better than the competition, you know, generally speaking. So now we're going to talk about how we went ahead and tested these different models. So we went through a kind of a different series of, uh, of different events and we tested this all in house so that we kind of weren't really going off a piece of paper on this. We are telling you what we witnessed, what we saw. So again, very excited to bring this over to you guys because I know everyone's been kind of asking us what's the best bang for the buck or just what's the best technology that you guys can get me for anti-fog eyewear. So the first test we did is we essentially ran these through some steaming. So the classic kind of kettle with hot water testing. So we steamed these right up 
And the next thing that we did after we kind of gave them time to rest was we stuck them in a freezer for about a half an hour. Then after we froze them, we basically took them out of the freezer and brought them back to the kettle. So right from frozen to the hot kettle. And then last but not least, we did a very good testing for, you know, the Canadian Northerners here. Uh, we essentially wore them outside with our masks on, exhaling, kind of trying to just, you know, go through that, that normal use that you would actually experience out there. Um, and just tried to see how they performed with that simultaneous hot and cold. It was about minus 26 with wind chill outside when we did the testing. So it was definitely a good day to kind of do some testing on that. Um, and then finally we did, you know, the other aspect of it, which was going from being outside to bringing them indoors and seeing how they fared once kind of that, that contrast would really kick in. So sort of similar to the freezer to kettle kind of testing, but just, you know, a little bit different. And we will go into that because the performance overall was not quite the same in terms of how they fared. So it was neat to see the difference between actually wearing them in kind of that practical use versus is just that straight, you know, we'll say lab testing. All right, so now getting into the testing and the results, one thing that we want to kind of identify as well is that we had, you know, the two pairs of the glasses, of course, that have no coating on them, but something else that we did, again, special appearance, thanks to our friends at DSI. Um, so basically, the this is a lens cleaner. It's the fog away. So we sprayed one of the pair of, of kind of standard safety glasses with this spray and cleaned it with it. Um, so we, you know, labeled one of them as the pair that was sprayed and we kind of just wanted to see how it performed. So these guys right over here, just again, your basic lens, kind of the, you know, mostly anti-scratch if anything, and that's about all they had to them. So these ones here, of course, the performance was low. Uh, you know, as, as soon as you put them over the kettle, you were gonna have complete fogging up. Dissipation took a, a good amount of time when we had them in the freezer, as soon as we took them out, even just having our hands around the lenses, we could see a little bit of fogging up starting to kind of take place. Then when we put them over the kettle, of course, they just fogged right up and uh, fogged on outside, inside of lens completely. Um, just that exposure from the hot to the cold, they just did not fare you know, well whatsoever. Um, wearing them outside, very much the same thing. Fogged up, wearing them from outside to inside, just nothing but fog. So as far as that goes, that's kind of what you're gonna expect from a regular pair of glasses. If you don't really believe in anti-fog technology, hopefully this is a video that will convince you of otherwise. Then what we did is we basically, again, took the spray here and we sprayed a pair of the glasses with nothing on it and we gave them a good wipe down. Now, what we observed out of that is that essentially the fogging still really took place. So, you know, as far as a, you know, zero out of 10 scale, you could say the first pair was zero out of 10 and then the pair where we had kind of put some spray on would give those about a two out of 10 overall. I mean, you know, the way that it fogged up was not as aggressive, not as like instant, if you will, um, but they still fogged up at the end of the day. And so, and it, and it didn't take very long. Now, the one thing that we did observe across all the testings that we did with the pair that had the spray on anti-fog was that they dissipated a lot better. So the fog, even though it did build up, the way that it went away and cleared up was, was much faster than the pair with absolutely nothing on. So that was a nice thing to see. Next, we're gonna talk about the DSi Volcanoes here with the 4A coating. So these ones, we were actually pretty impressed with the results overall. So in that direct uh, steam environment where you had the kettle kind of blowing on it, essentially out of these, uh, we would actually say that they did very well. Uh, we gave them a ranking of nine out of 10 on that because to be honest with you, uh, the water just kind of beaded right down, dripped off, um, and it was actually pretty impressive results. Now, when it came down to the freezer test and we took them out, uh, they didn't fog up. And then once we had them against the kettle heat from the freezer, um, honestly, they, they did kind of start having a fair bit of moisture buildup and we were see a, a lot of the dripping. Now, of course, it eventually kind of dripped off, but that's the kind of the thing you got to watch for is when you start seeing a lot of liquid kind of building up around the lens areas because then it kind of creates that distorted vision and view. So when we wore them outside, however, and that simultaneous cold and heat from, you know, exhaling, wearing a mask kind of came in, uh, we were pretty impressed. These ones actually did pretty well on that. There was definitely some moisture that built up around the nasal area. So um, that's a very common theme, by the way, you're gonna hear us talk about that a fair bit. So 
all that buildup around the nose, it did kind of start to kind of take place and spread slowly as we wore them outside. Now on these kind of lateral sides of the lens, uh, especially with something kind of that wraparound design, you definitely have clear vision there, but I mean, you're not really gonna start looking out the sides of the glasses constantly. That's not really a great option. But overall for being outside and wearing these, I'd say they did actually quite well. So we were pretty pleased to see that. Now for going from outside to inside, that was a different story. Um, unfortunately, the 4A coating, I would say, did not do superbly well. So overall on those ones, you know, we kind of ranked them around 7.5 out of 10 for that outdoor to indoor testing. Uh, we were kind of hoping to see something a little bit better out of that, but you know, in, in reality, they performed pretty similar to how they did when we took them from the freezer right to the kettle. So in that sense, they were consistent, um, but unfortunately that distorted vision because of all the water kind of beating up on the lens was still kind of a reality that we had to face. Next, we're gonna talk about the DynaShield. So again, this is kind of a guest appearance for it, um, but they did really well under that kind of direct heat um, and they also did pretty well as far as it goes um, outside. So on the steam test, we gave them a 9.5. Going from the freezer to the steam itself, we were actually a little bit disappointed. We noticed a, a, a considerable amount of steam considering the level of the technology here. Most of the steaming that we had on that test kind of came around the center point of this lens. Um, and they kind of took a little bit to dissipate on that front. So again, we were expecting a little bit better of that, but it still did well. As for the outdoor test, we gave it a nine out of 10. It did well there. And then going from outdoor to indoor, again, there was definitely a small amount of moisture that built up around the nose, um, not too, too much in the center area, but overall, you know, still some noticeable kind of fogging up that took place from the outdoor and indoor. Um, so on that, we gave it about an 8.5. So for 3M's Scotchgard technology, uh, these ones here did phenomenally well in the steam test. So we actually gave them a 10 out of 10 on the direct steam exposure. When it came to the freezer to steam testing, these ones, we gave them a 9.5. There was a little bit of water kind of building up that was starting to create, you know, what we would consider some blurry vision, a little bit of that kind of fogging up in the center points, kind of like the DynaShield. Um, so, you know, we gave those a 9.5 though, because it wasn't quite as bad as what we saw in the DynaShield. Um, but uh, yeah, again, very good overall. When it came to the outdoor test, it was nearly negligible the amount of fogging up that took place. Mostly around the nose, again, that's kind of the, the typical theme that we observed, um, but that's kind of what you get from that. So yeah, I mean, again, quite well, 9.5 on that. The outdoor to indoor testing was a little bit of a different story. Again, small amounts of noise, moisture around the nose. We essentially would equate that to what you would get out of the Dyna Shield. So overall, you know, again, we were kind of hoping for something a little bit better, especially with the way that this performed in some of the earlier tests that we did. Um, but at the end of the day, the Scotchgard technology still did really well. Um, you know, the 3M brand still stands really strong as far as it goes for anti-fog. Um, but uh, yeah, again, for the outdoor to indoor, we were hoping for something a little bit more impressive, um, but it was still good. All right, so, you know, save the best for last is kind of the theme here. So Honeywell's UVEX HydroShield technology definitely took the cake at the end of the day. So with the HydroShield, like we mentioned, it's got the hydrophilic and phobic technology working side by side. That did really well in the steam test, uh, the freezer to steam, uh, but it was really the outdoor testing that, that kind of blew us away, I would say. When it came down to the steam test, uh, we gave these about a 9.5. There was a little bit of that fogging up. Uh, again, the Scotch Guard in the steam test was by far the best one in terms of that direct uh, steam exposure, um, but they did well. Going from the freezer to the steam itself, uh, we gave that a 10. Yes, technically a little bit of some of the fogging, kind of like the others had, um, but they just fared super strongly, especially in regards to how the competition did. Uh, so we gave them a 10 out of 10 on that because we were pretty impressed with how they held up. Um, the thing is, this is a framed pair and most of the other pairs that we have here are kind of frameless style. So that was part of, you know, we noticed some water building up and all that. So we kind of feel like, you know, there's a possibility for sure that the frame, the way it kind of traps some of the liquid could be part of it as opposed to just dripping right out. Um, but we felt like they did really well. The outdoor test and just kind of breathing through the mask and everything in the cold weather, there was basically nothing coming up on here and anything that kind of started slowly building up would dissipate almost instantly. So 
we were very happy with that. That's phenomenal testing as far as it goes, you know, when you're in that cold weather, that's what a lot of people have been experiencing. That's what they've been asking us about. And of course, the next side to it is outdoor to indoor. The HydraShield technology did phenomenally well. We gave it a 9.5 because it wasn't really just like completely clear. There was a little bit around the nose area, but overall compared to how the other technologies performed, we honestly were very impressed. They did the best. So as a summary to all of this, we would say that the HydraShell technology was definitely the best ranking one. So, you know, we're very happy with that. Uh, we do sell a lot of HydraShields. Um, you know, it is a great, great product offering. Um, and there's a lot of variety of different models of the UVEX line that, that offers the HydraShield technology in, in varying price points. Um, so it does make it something that's very accessible, which is, you know, definitely something that we like. Now. As far as the best bang for the buck, we do want to give a good shout out to the 4A coating. I mean, the 4A coating having that kind of anti-scratch, anti-abrasion, the anti-UV, the anti-fog, I mean, it does give you a lot um, and the price point is very, very good. So if you're looking for something that fares quite well in most of those circumstances, especially in any kind of a humid area uh, where you do kind of want to be careful with, you know, getting that, that regular fogging in those kind of hot, steamy environments, the 4A lens did phenomenally well. If it's a matter of going a lot from indoor to outdoor, vice versa, um, in that case, the 4A wasn't our strongest uh, unit in the lineup here. But again, for the price point, it's quite good and it does fare pretty well overall um, and if you don't really have too much trouble with quickly taking them off giving them a quick wipe down when we go from outside to inside then it's really no issue whatsoever um, I would say and again for the price point it's pretty phenomenal so that's our lineup here today guys again special shout out to all of our uh, different vendors who have created some phenomenal technologies over the years we're happy to offer these to our customers. You know, everybody's been asking about it. So here we are talking about it. So if you've been on the fence about what you want to invest in, this is kind of a good way to kind of just get a bit of a summary. You know, it is a bit of a longer video. We appreciate you guys checking it out if you have watched all the way to the end here. So thank you very much for sticking around. Thank you for watching another Feature Friday and we will see you guys next week. Cheers.